Hello, feline friends. We are back. Today, we're going to be working with Mr. Ziggy. Here, you see me just assessing his coat. It looks like uh, initially his back was fairly clear, but his booty and down his legs are pretty severely pelted. Now, unfortunately, today, Ziggy is presenting as a aggressive cat. While initially it started off as mild, we did see it escalate quite a bit. More in explosive ways, wanting to just try and escape the process, not necessarily attack me as the groomer. So let's go ahead and jump into it. First thing we're going to do is try and get into this rear end area. Unfortunately, this is the worst part of the cat. He had quite a substantial amount of fecal matter stuck to his rear end. Uh, large pelts that were very hardened, rock hard in this area. Uh, pretty extreme uh, matting in this area on the back end. It was fairly loose on the top of his back, um, but as we got into it, it was became very clear that it was uh, more severe than what we initially had anticipated. He's doing that classic, like, kind of a whining sound. <clears throat> it's kind of a wind-up sound. So we're going to go ahead and switch him. Not that he's attacked or anything. We're just kind of being preventative here. I'm going ahead and switching just because I'm hearing a lot more vocalizations for him and he's giving me quite the side eye. We're going to go ahead and jump back into the groom here. Uh, switching to the air muzzle is a necessity for just my own safety, but also what we're trying to do here is limit how much sensory he's taking in during the experience. The air muzzle kind of acts like a uh, blinders on a horse, uh, kind of limits how much he can actually take in in his field of vision. That not only limits his overstimulation, but it also limits his target range towards me. So... Okay, we're going to start seeing a lot of reactivity here. We're working on the top side of his rear end, and these mats are very, very tight to the skin. Very painful. He's really wanting out of this. I understand that. So we're going to let him wiggle out of that, kind of release our hold on him, and readjust. So <clears throat> this gives him a minute to just kind of calm down a little bit, but then we're going to just reapproach. This time we're going to do a side roll though and expose kind of from the bottom side up since he's not comfortable sitting in the standard like loaf position you would see on the table. He just wants to jet out from behind underneath me. And so this approach, he lets me do quite a bit of this before he gets fed up as well. We are hitting mini explosions every time. I can't show every single one, but you can see that he kind of just wants to get away. It's not like he's targeting any aggression towards me, but he is definitely trying to get out of the process itself. Okay, and the second I release my hold, you can see here, he just starts to spring right up and get out of it. So we're going to give him a moment. Uh, he kept freaking out, and so I went ahead and took control of his leg. By controlling his legs, we can limit how much flailing he does. Now, generally, the more flailing a cat does, the more panicked they get. And it kind of almost feeds into this extreme panic that just fuels itself cyclically until they either exhaust themselves or we get into medical crisis. So limiting the leg, the flailing, is actually a really good preventative step to, one, keeping control of the groom, but two, making sure that we don't hit a medical crisis. We're going to calmly resume grooming the areas that he's letting us do, making sure that we're really stretching out those limbs to create flat planes for our clippers to go over. This is so critical. A lot of people interpret the leg stretching as something that's cruel or inhumane, but reality is if a groomer is not stretching out the legs like this to create flat surfaces of the skin, they will cut a cat up so fast it's not even funny. It is too dangerous not to ensure that this part is done. So when you're stretching limbs, you want to make sure that you stay within range of motion and that, <laughs> oh man, yeah, I forgot. <laughs> he, he tried to nab me here. So all I did here was uh, take control of his front limbs and uh, begin the stretching process again. Um, just making sure that we're getting that side flap underneath that armpit is a very risky area to cut. Um, and he just, you know, he's really just throwing a little hissy fit here. We are getting through it safe though, and so uh, we're just keep on cruising out throughout the whole body. Back end does continue to be a trigger point for him. This is a really hard struggle for him in particular. I think the matting was most tight back there, and he has some pretty intense scarring in that area 
post groom. So um, he he is really beginning to fight me at this point, and I've gotten most everything off except for the back. I was thinking about trying to save it, um, but I ran a comb through it uh, real quick, and it snagged too many times. So I decided to go ahead at, for humanity's sake, go ahead and shave it, so we didn't have a longer dry time and a longer uh, time that he was just being discombobulated here. Okay, final step is just to make sure that his neck is nicely taut so we can shave that all up nice and clear. It is the final step before we go jump into the tub. He's been pretty good about this part, which kind of surprised me. Now we're going to hop into the tub and I've done a light towel wrap on his front end just because he was such a jumpy and swatty. I don't know how he's going to react. Really, he just wiggled out from underneath me and wanted to kind of flop all over. He was actually pretty relaxed in the tub as opposed to everywhere else. No explosions, more just like escape and more like a floppy pancake. He really just was like, flopped everywhere truly like a rag doll but he's not a rag doll so we just kind of let him do his own thing and bathe them right where he was at and it was actually very chill which tracks for aggressive cats aggressive cats do very well in the tub which surprises people in the dryer, he didn't really like the dryer box. I didn't have my camera set up for that part, um, but I finally got Justin to set the camera up for me uh, while I was drying, and we just kind of did a towel wrap on my lap, and of course, I got plenty of fur in my face, um, but he did really good for that part too. Some final touch-ups on the shaving. It, this, I just did a little bit because he started getting explosive back on me and I didn't really want to push him too much. So uh, any scragglies there, well, they were, they were just left. And I think the owner was super understanding about that too. So uh, final quick comb through through his uh, mane and then we called it a wrap on this guy. We always try and restore a little bit of relationship on these really tough brooms. So a little treat goes a long way. Uh, we offered it to him while he didn't take it. He did give us a few moments of pets and snuggles uh, before his dad arrived. Ziggy's aggressive start was all due to the pain from his tight mats. Cats like him who struggle with clipper work could do much better on a regular bath and blow dry schedule to prevent mats in the first place. By staying proactive instead of reactive to the matting, we can keep Ziggy comfortable. His dad was on board with this plan, so we're set up to keep these mats at bay moving forward. Thanks for watching. This has been expert cat care that you can trust with Sweet Whiskers. Tune in next time for more catastic content.